Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I've got a really cool coffered ceiling build going on here. I wasn't planning on doing a video of this install, but it ended up being really a cool detail um, that I kind of wanted to show you. So I'm getting ready to pop my last board in for the beams, and then we'll also have an interior trim that'll go around here. But this is a tricky situation because whenever you have beams intersecting like this, you always wanna have a biscuit in there so that that joint stays together forever and you don't end up with a hairline crack in the uh, after paint. So if I'm gonna put biscuits on this end and I try to insert this in here, the problem is I can't do it on the other end. So how do we address that? So yesterday I did this a little bit different. I actually ended up using two boards so that I could take my biscuits, I could insert them up here and then I had a splice right here that I sandwiched together and uh, ended up with just a joint in the center, but not a big deal. I posted that on Instagram and somebody shared a little bit tip of a tip with me. I've never done before, but we're gonna try it and see how it works right now. A lot of you probably had the thought, well, you could just flex the board down in the center, which would reduce the width enough that you could get the biscuits into their slots and then snap it into place. This board isn't quite long enough to do that, and it's fairly stiff, so that would be pretty tough to do. But you can see here, I've got a half inch thick board, and you can see how much looser and how much more I'm able to bend that. So the idea is, we're gonna try and kerf cut the back side of this piece to give us more flex so that I can snap that in there. So how do I go about making a bunch of kerf cuts in this? Some of you might know this, some of you might not, but there is actually a depth stop on your DeWalt sliding table saws and most table saws for that matter, which will allow the blade only to come down to a certain point and you can adjust the height and depth of the blade by turning this screw. So if I flip this stop down, you'll see my blade only goes down to this point right now. So that's how we're gonna do these kerf cuts. In order to get the depth to go all the way through, I need to bring uh, the piece back. So I'm just using a piece of scrap material here. And I've already got the depth set. The back side is facing up. So we'll go ahead and start making some cuts. So you can see here, I made some kerf cuts it's a little bit better, but not that great. So I think my first technique that I used yesterday of just making another butt joint with biscuits in the center of the board may actually have been the better bet, but we're gonna try this and see if it'll work. All right, you can see I've got my biscuits in there all glued up. We'll see how this goes. I already dry fitted it, just so you know. I, I know that it's gonna go in, but I didn't know how much this was gonna flex whenever we first started this. So I can't go up because my biscuits are sticking out on the end, which is why I cur curve cut this so that I can bow it down, which reduces the length. So now it's right up in there, looks really good. And now we can just snap it into place. We've got a nice tight fit with some glue squeeze out, looks really good. Now I have a cleat up inside these beams so I can push this bottom piece up against that cleat and that makes so everything is perfectly flush across the bottom. The trick is to use a clamp and get it tight. That creates some friction. Then I'll take my rubber mallet and that friction will hold it up and hold it up in there tight against the cleat and I can nail it off. So with the piece that we just snapped into place, I actually cut it about a 30 second long so that I'd get a lot of pressure on these joints with the biscuits. So I don't need to use a pinch dog here. Whenever I started with this piece on this side, I wanted a little bit more pressure, which is why you see these pinch dogs right here. After I pull out these pinch dogs, I always try and pre-fill the hole with some wood filler just so it gets the hole most of the way full before the painter goes over it again. 
All right, guys, so I've given you a taste of what these are gonna look like all finished up. Now I'm gonna show you how I actually went about building these beams. The really unique thing about this coffered ceiling is this quarter inch by quarter inch detail that we have going along both sides that gets mitered around every intersection. Because of that, I had to build this coffered ceiling in a way that I've never actually done it before. It's turned out really well, but now I'm gonna walk you through that process on how I went about doing this. This is a mock-up of the coffered ceiling that I'm done with now. I wanna show you how it goes together though. This was a really tricky coffered ceiling to execute well. This is a piece of the baseboard. By now, a lot of you probably saw the video I had on baseboard, but this quarter inch by quarter inch dado kind of carries throughout the whole house in the design. So we've got the same thing here on the coffered ceiling. Let's just take this apart and I'll tell you how I went about putting this all together. The heart and soul of any coffered ceiling is the blocking that you use to attach all of your boards to the ceiling. I prefer to use actual one by material that matches the width of the pieces that I'm going to be building the finished coffered ceiling out of. If you go with framing material, there's a lot more variance in the width, a lot more bows and cups and things you have to deal with. So I started off just using one by six and attaching that up onto the ceiling for starting with the blocking. So the key here as we build this is we have to have the width stay very precise so that whenever we finish up and we insert our one by six into the bottom of these beams, that everything fits together really well. So it's very important that as you start your blocking, as you run your pieces through and your intersecting pieces, everything needs to line up perfectly. To help keep our, our beams plumb on the sides, I like to make blocks like this, and then I'll pocket hole screw the blocks into my, my um, blocking that's on the ceiling already, and that helps keep things nice and plumb. Now we've got some interior blocking that's gonna help keep our beams plumb so that whenever we put everything together, it's going to also help keep everything at the proper width as well. So you'll see, this is just like Legos here. After we finish up and have all our pieces together, the width on these is going to be such that we can just drop our top one by six into place and everything should line up pretty nicely. I almost screwed up big time. Usually I like to batch my processes. So I started out by routing the quarter inch by quarter inch rabbit in multiple beams and I didn't realize it, but my bit was actually moving a little bit. My, uh, my router base wasn't super tight and I think I didn't have my collet very tight either. So I had routed a board and not even realized it, but my depth got another 16th deeper. So I ended up having to scrap that board. So this is something you wanna keep an eye on. Make sure when you're doing something like this that your adjustment is nice and tight. I ended up going through again and I tightened this set screw on the base so that whenever you crank this down, it cranks really tight. And I also tightened my collet as well. So we want this to be at a quarter inch by quarter inch, and I would just periodically check the bit throughout the process as I was doing this to make sure it wasn't moving on me. To make the side beams, all I'm doing is putting an edge guide on the router and then running this bit first one way with a climb cut, 
that pulls the grain into the wood so that it doesn't splinter off. And then I finish it off going back the other direction. And as you can see, you get a really nice crisp rabbit on the edge of the board. The goal with this detail is we want the beam to plane out flush all the way across the base of it. We want it to be perfect. In order to do that, I'm using a cleat on the inside of the beam, just three quarter by three quarter, nailing that and gluing that to the inside so that when we go and put the bottom of the beam in, everything planes out nice and flush and it's really easy to get everything perfect whenever we nail it together. Nailing the cleat on, I made a little jig so that this represents the thickness of my bottom board. And I like to just go along, mark with a pencil line so you have a rough idea where this is gonna go. I do recommend putting a little bit of glue on this cleat because at times you need to really hammer that bottom board up and you don't want this cleat to move on you whenever you're trying to get everything situated in place and nailed down. So we'll flip this over and you wanna use your actual jig. As you go along, pull that cleat in tight, turn your nail gun on, and then nail it off with inch and a quarter nails. I like to put a fair amount of nails in this, probably every eight to 10 inches. Again, just so I can ensure that it's in the perfect location. The trickiest part of building this is that your measurements have to be absolutely perfect. If you're cutting things too long and you're forcing them into place, you'll find that whenever you go through and you wanna put your one by six in here, it's gonna to be too tight and you're really gonna to struggle to get it in. If your measurements are too short, you'll go to put the one by six in and you'll have gaps along the side here that won't look good. So with this style, it is absolutely crucial that your measurements are right on the money. So sorry again, I don't have footage of me actually installing these because I wasn't planning on making the video, but just try and visualize in your head, this would be up on, in the ceiling, on the ceiling and then we're gonna be nailing our one by eights onto the side. The trick is you want the top of the one by eight to be about a quarter inch low. That way you can just float these across the ceiling and you're not having to scribe them to the ceiling. I am gonna end up putting a piece of trim up on top here so that'll cover the gap between the top of my one by eight and the ceiling. You'll notice these blocks are really important. They help keep the beams at the correct width all the way around. They also help keep everything nice and plumb um, and just kind of align everything really well. Now again, I had never done this before using this order of operations. So I was pretty nervous about whether I was going to end up being able to just drop these pieces in place or not. So I actually started on one end of the room and I got my vertical boards in up to this point on about a fourth of the room. And then I went in and put my one by six in just to ensure that I wasn't gonna have a disaster. Thankfully, everything was fitting really well. Anytime you're trying to wrestle 16 foot long boards together up on a ceiling, you wanna make things as easy as possible for yourself. So if you're trying to fit this in place and you've got sharp edges on the back of your board, they're gonna be getting hung up all the time. They can end up causing you to splinter off your nice crisp details here. So something that I almost always do is round over this back edge. And what that's gonna do is it's just gonna allow this board to drop into place so much nicer um, and just reduce the friction a little bit. So after we get this board in place, it's, we want to have a really nice connection between the other boards that intersect right here. So you wanna glue that, put a couple biscuits in there, which I showed at the beginning of the video. That way you can just snap those together like so, 
Oops, that's upside down. Let's try that again, like so. And then a lot of times, if it's not coming together really well, just like you want, take a pinch dog and hammer that in place. And you can see that draws the joint together really tight. And that clamping pressure is what you want to have that really strong long-term glue joint. This will all be painted, so we do not want this joint to crack and have an ugly hairline dark crack over time. I talked before about how we started by floating these vertical side beams down about a quarter inch off of the ceiling. That allows us to keep everything on the correct plane, but yet not have to scribe it to the ceiling. In our design meeting, when we were talking about this detail, I said I'd have no problem scribing these beams to the ceiling, but the design architect actually wanted to put a piece of trim up there, which was nice for me because then I didn't have to scribe any of the, uh, the beams to the ceiling. But the next thing I have to do is go through and install this trim all the way around. I think it's gonna look really good. Just a very basic low key trim and it'll look like that. So you'll notice going around the room, we've got this gap between the top of the beam and the ceiling. That was okay because we're gonna go through and we're gonna cover that with a piece of trim. Most coffered ceilings, that's a nice size crown molding. The designer on this job wanted to use this kind of low key, just straight edge trim like this. I think it's gonna look really good. I said that I could scribe these beams to the ceiling no problem, they actually didn't want that. You will notice this outer band board is lower than this one here by about a quarter inch. That's intentional. We wanted to have a little bit of a reveal underneath these beams right here, but then keep this beam low enough that I could basically just float it across the ceiling and not have to worry about scribing it. There was one area where there was a pretty good hump in the ceiling. I had to cut a little bit out of the top of the one by eight, but not too much. You will notice I do have my laser up here and a lot of times it's a question of, do you use a laser and make everything perfectly level or do you follow the contour of the ceiling? The answer for me is a little bit of both. If you follow the laser too closely, and let's say this bulkhead right here was a quarter inch out of level, and I put this board in level all the way across, that would create a really ugly reveal line so you, you kinda are trying to find a balance between doing what is level and what will look good. For the most part, this was actually very close to level all the way across, so I used the laser as kind of a general guideline as I built this. I will tell you guys, this detail did take me quite a bit longer than I normally take for my standard coffered ceiling, uh, so keep that in mind if you're gonna do this for yourself. I wasn't really planning on making a video on this, but as I saw this detail come together, I thought it was pretty cool and wanted to show you guys. Next step is I'm gonna get back to work. I gotta cut all these trims to go around the inside of all these boxes, but hope you found the video helpful. Let me know what you think, drop a comment, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you on the next video.